Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this FNIRSI DCM100 Intelligent Clamp Multimeter. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So this says 10,000 true counts, data saving and viewing, 25 millimeter large jaw, so that's about an inch. Flashlight, it says intelligent anti-burning. Let's look on the back. So this does AC and DC current. AC DC voltage, resistance, continuity, diode, capacitance, frequency, temperature, live. So that's live power and NCV, which is non-contact voltage. And here we have the parameters. So you can pause and read through those. So this is rechargeable lithium with USB type C. So let's get this open. So this looks like it has a ton of functionality on it, including an AC and DC clamp meter. So we have probes and a temperature probe, USB type C charge cable, peel the screen off with the screen protector. So that opens like so. So a clamp like that is for measuring the AC and DC current. And then we plug in the probes here for using the regular traditional multimeter functionality. This opens up, it has USB type C charge port. So let's plug that in and let it start charging. And we'll take a look at the manual. So you just charge this up with a phone charger or similar. So this is charging at 0.64 amps. Now that can vary depending on the state of charge of the meter. So let's look at the manual. So English starts on page 10, it looks like it goes to 19. And I'm not going to cover everything in here. I'm just going to give an overview. So this shows the different parts. So this has push buttons to use it. This tells how to use the buttons. So to turn it on and off, you long press the power button so we have kind of a left and a right arrow, and they have some different functions on it. And there's an OK button, and the functionality will either be a short press or a long press. You long press the flashlight button to turn the flashlight on. And here are the specs for the ranges and such for the voltages and the resistance and capacitance. And here's some more specs, and this talks how to use it. And this has a screen so we can watch trends on here. Looks like there's a firmware upgrade mode, and it has some other notes. Let's get the probes out. There are the probes, and those are needle sharp there. So if you're working on electronics and such, you can get into the contacts with those. I'm gonna actually recover those. Now on this end, they're gonna have little caps. You want to pull those out before you put it in the meter. Now a lot of people probably know this, but someone might be new to this. So black will go into com, red will go into input. And I'll make sure these are pressed in all the way. It's kind of a tight fit. There we go. Let's unplug this and see what our battery is looking like. So actually, let's try the flashlight first. I'll hold that down. And it's not coming on, so you must have to have it on. I was curious about that. So I'll hold the power button down. It has English and Chinese. So I'll go to English. I'll hold down the flashlight button and it has that light. And it's not super bright. So that's really for very dark areas. And it's very bright here, so you're not going to see that. But if you're working on, say, a furnace or something that's kind of dark, that'll give you light right where you're going to put the clamp on. So I'll turn that off. So if we look at the display here, okay, so here we have amps. That's the A. And then that symbol is DC. So these are DC amps. We press the button, we have the wave. That's AC amps. So let's go to the next. This is DC volts. Press mode, we have AC volts. These are ohms. And continuity and diode, here we have capacitance, here we have frequency and temperature, here we have live and non-contact voltage. So we can see at the bottom too where we're at. So I'm going to get some things to test. I'll turn it off for now with the power button. We'll start with some AC, so I'll turn this on. I'm going to turn my light off here. So we'll hit mode and we're at volts AC. So if you're going to measure AC with this, make sure you know what you're doing. I'm not going to go over the proper procedure, but I'll go in here and here we have 121.9 volts. I can also measure hot to ground, 121.9 volts. So if we go to the, let's see the live here. If I take the red and place it in the hot, we're going to see that's going to detect it as hot. 
So if I put it in the neutral, we're not getting anything in the hot, we're getting it. So if you're trying to figure out which one is hot, you can use that feature. Now, if we press mode, we're gonna go into non-contact voltage and we should get a reading. The sensor is going to be right here. Let's go here and it's detecting power. So if you're using that to detect power, what you want to do is go to a known good source, check that out, and then check the unknown source. That way you know this is functioning properly. So that's some AC power, and we'll get to the amperage here in a little bit. So let's go to voltage. Here we have nine volt battery. So that's 9.267. Now let's measure a reverse, and we're going to get minus 9.268. We have a smaller battery here, do the same thing. It's got 1.432. And then we have some components here. So let's go to resistor. I have a resistor of unknown size. I mean, I could figure it out with the rings, but so we've got 0.5 ohms there. We'll hit mode. This is continuity. So if we touch these, we're gonna get a beep. So it's pretty responsive. like that. What else do we have here? Here we have diode. So let's try diode. I have a little diode here. And we're not getting any voltage there. Let's flip it over. And we're getting 0.193. So you test it both directions and you have zero one direction and voltage the other. So we know that's good. Here we have capacitance. So I have two capacitors. So this is an electrolytic, so it's going to have polarity and it's 120 microfarad. So let's get this correct. So sometimes you need to hold these on here for a second. So we got 108, and there's gonna be a tolerance on here, and that's within the tolerance. So this one here is 330. It's also electrolytic. So we're getting 168. So if we see here, this is bulging at the top. It's probably very hard to see. It's just barely bulging, but this capacitor is bad. So we can find that out by testing. So let's pull these out and let's switch to temperature, which was that on, on Hertz. So if we go to Hertz, we can go to temperature and we'll plug in the temperature probe and we see 28C. So hold my fingers on here and we can see that raising up as 34C. So you can use this to measure temperatures of things if you're working on refrigeration or things like that. So let's unplug that. Now let's do some amperage testing. I need to get a setup for that, so I'll get set that up and I'll come right back. Okay, so I have a DC setup here. I have a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. I have a 1000 watt inverter and I have an AC load plugged into the inverter. So I'll turn this on and I want to be on A for amps and then the straight lines for DC. And I'll place that on the negative terminal here or the negative cable. So this is negative. If I flip this over, that's going to be positive. So I'll turn the fan on. And we can see we're at 2.77 amps. So I'll turn it off. Now we can see this on a graph. I'll hold down the mode button. And here we have a little graph. So I'll zoom in on that. So the graph is still going there, and we can see we're at 0.77 amps. So I'll turn that on, and this is actually backwards because it says negative, but you can see we're at 2.59, so we can see it dropped low. So if you're looking for a startup surge or something, you can turn it on this mode, and you can see that little graph. And again, you hold down the mode button to get to that, and we hold down the mode button to go back. Now I can also press this save button here. It says data saved, if I hold down on that, it's going to go into this mode that's going to show me the different settings. So the most recent save. So this is also going to have settings on it. Let's see if we're focused in there. Let me pull this up so we can get better focus. So here we also have the different settings. We have brightness. I'll change to Fahrenheit. So I'll hold down save to back out of here. And we can go back to the main interface. Now we can also hold down on the VA. And that will bring an interface up with amps and volts. So we can have this on here, we could have our probes on the terminals, and we could measure both at the same time. So let's try AC now. So to measure AC, we need a splitter. If you try and measure both at the same time, that will not work. 
So here I have a splitter. These are pretty common to use with clamp meters. So let's just use this fan again. This one's a little weird. This one's not grounded, but it should still work. So I'll turn the fan on, turn the clamp meter on. We're at zero amps. I'll go around here and we're at 0.33 amps. Now this has a 10x setting. So that's at 3.45. So if you use that mode, you divide by 10. So if you have very low amperage, you might use the 10x to amplify it. Now I said this has the dual mode and this works very well for that. So we'll plug our probes back in. And on this one, I can place my probes into the voltage check. There, now those are live. So I want to be very careful. I'll switch this on the mode with both. And I'll put the clamp meter on here. And I'll turn this on. Let's see if we have, we have our voltage and I'll turn this on. So here you can see we have 0 0.31 amps, 122 volts. And in the middle it has the wattage, which is 37.82. Because when you know amps and voltage, you can calculate the wattage. So that's nice because a lot of times it's easier to think in watts if you're used to watts. So if you're testing out some equipment, you can look at the wattage and say, oh, that's too high, or maybe it's not enough, and it can help you diagnose problems. So that's the FNIRSI DCM100 Intelligent Clamp Multimeter. I'm really impressed with the feature set on this. This has all the features of a full featured multimeter with the ability to do AC and DC amperage. The screen on this is really nice and easy to read. It's very bright in here and it's very visible. There might be a little glare. Actually, I'm not even seeing a lot of glare on the camera. But in person, it's very bright. I'll turn it and see. I mean, it's just almost at too far of an angle here, but I can still see the screen at this high angle. Like right there, I can read it. But it really wasn't the screen fault. It's just compressed too much for me to see. But it's very visible at many angles, so that's nice. It's very easy to use switching between modes, and it also has that rechargeable battery in it, so you can charge this up with a phone charger. So if you're on the job, you could have a power bank to charge it even. And overall, very nice tool. I'm very impressed with this. So if you had one multimeter to take with you to do everything, this could be a great option. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.